we were super hungry and one of us was super irritable while we were filming this. So stay tuned till the end because we got some yeah, she for this was, one. She was just crying. <laughs> <laughs> we hope you enjoy. Bye. Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. I'm Vanessa. I'm Richie. And this is Richie and Vanessa Travel. We had a really hard time trying to figure out what to bring you guys this week, but we finally decided we're going to talk about our 14-day Alaska cruise. This is a cruise that we took back in 2018. And we got to see beautiful parts of Alaska as well as bonus some parts of Canada. So let's get into it and let you guys know what the cruise was all about. So this cruise we took back in August of 2018. It was a 14 day cruise. And the ports that we were lucky enough to stop at were Vancouver, Canada, Huna, also known as Icy Strait Point, Alaska, Skagway, Glacier Bay, Juneau, Sitka, and Ketchikan. So since we had so many stops, we don't want to make this a super long video. So today we're going to go over Vancouver and maybe a little bit of Huna if we have a chance. Let's see if we can get to Huna or not, see how long this yeah. is. So uh, first stop that we made was Vancouver and I think it made us fall in love so with beautiful. Canada. Yeah. It that, was, was, that was my second time out of the country. Yeah. It was, I don't know, I, I've been out of the country before, mm. but um, Canada was... I have to say it lives up to its stereotypes. Like, I think Canada's known as like being a really pretty place and having like super nice people. Yeah. And I think it totally yeah. lived up to those stereotypes. So green and alive. And I have to say for it being such a large city, we found it to be super clean and super yeah. quiet it as was well. Really quiet. It wasn't as loud as like it most was, big it cities. It was weird because a lot of people were like, most people kept to themselves. They were just yeah. walking around going about their business. Mm -hmm. Yeah, everybody was like minding their own business. But um, when you did talk to somebody, they, they were, were super nice. Really helpful and mm -hmm. really nice. We had an experience at a drugstore where we asked the clerk, you know, what are some popular Canadian snacks we'd like to take some back home? And I kid you not, there was a line of like five people behind us and each one started chipping in like, oh, hey, you should try this. <laughs> and then another person was like, oh, go get these chips. Oh, go try these candies. Like everyone was just so nice. And what was it? The ketchup chips. Ketchup chips apparently are a thing there. So um, but we did take a ton of pictures at the Capilano Suspension Bridge, which was the activity that we chose to do because it looked very pretty. We did not do this through the actual cruise company like we normally do. There's actually a shuttle that picks you up right at the port, right at the cruise terminal, takes you to the bridge. It's completely free. They run about every 15 minutes or so. Average has six million dollars. And for your information, only shuttle bus driver can afford to buy those houses. So we got up early, took the first one, got us to the bridge. I think we were like the 10th or 15th people in there. We, there was nobody there before us. It was our, our bus was the first mm -hmm. one that got in there. It was about $20 per person to get in. I honestly don't remember. I think at the time it was about $20 per person to get in. I'm not sure if that has changed since. Um, but it is the Capilano Suspension Bridge is the main attraction. However, there is also a uh, canopy that you can walk through, which is a bunch of mini suspension bridges that go through uh, the, the forest that's there in Canada. I can't remember the name of it. I do apologize. Um, but it was a wonderful experience. It did get a little bit crowded after we got yeah. there. It was a wonderful experience though. It was a ton of fun going through all these suspension bridges. And one thing that I really loved about it was they really talked about water conservation mm -hmm. and how important it is. So that was really nice. They had an awesome gift shop. So to give you some fun facts about the Capilano Bridge, um, the Capilano Bridge was originally suspended in 1889 by George Grant McKay. He was a Scottish civil engineer and a land developer. And a fun fact, in 1893, the bridge and McKay's cabin became a popular destination for adventurous friends, dubbed Capilano Tramps, who made a long journey by steamship before tramping up the tough, 
the Bruff Trail to McKay's property. After his death, the hemp rope bridge was replaced by a wire cable bridge in 1903. So I guess we're a couple on tramps. Yeah, we're tramps, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> so at this point, we finally got our first look at the bridge and we started to walk across it. This one, terrified of heights. Yeah. So people were at the other end shaking it and stuff. She was hanging on for dear life on the I edges. Was. I was. So at this, at this point, we finally had just started videoing. And I think you can really start to see that there, there were some like vlogger influences yeah. coming in because we we both at this point kind of started, you know, vlogging our feet, walking through the area, looking around, and I think I have turning like, it back to us. Like so. maybe what four or five videos at, at this spot, yeah, the bridge. Yeah. So I think this is where we kind of really started to see that we wanted to capture more of our travels for us and for like family members. We weren't at full YouTube level yet. No, but. <laughs> still though, it's set in vertical. Yeah. We didn't, I didn't turn the phone horizontal, so there's a nice waterfall down below. Yeah. With a running stream underneath the bridge. Mm -hmm. And like every spot at the, the area was just so photogenic. Like I don't think we took a single bad photo in this place. It's just so beautiful. Yeah. And the light was so perfect and it was just amazing. Oh, and we had hot dogs there too. Remember they had the little hot dog stand? Oh, it's like a little like lunch court Like burgers, type thing. yeah. Like, seemed like a theme park, like when you go to a theme park. Yeah. And they have like the lunch spot set off to the side. It was yeah. like that. And they had some live music, which was nice as well. Um, a great way to spend the afternoon. I think we ended up spending about three hours yeah. there. And then we headed back into the city. Uh, there were two things that I wanted to do for sure when we were in Canada. And Number I'm one. sure because this is because of flying the nest. <laughs> Number one was we had to go to a Tim Hortons. I was like, we have to go to a Tim Hortons. Timmy we, Tams. <laughs> we cannot not go to a Tim Hortons. It's ultimate Canada. So we went to a Tim Hortons and then number two was I had to go to a Lululemon store. A Lululemon was started in Canada. And so I was like, I have to go to a Canadian Lululemon. And the good thing was that kind of got us to walk all around the city yeah. looking for a Tim Hortons. I mm -hmm. mean, that wasn't hard. There was a Tim Hortons right by the yeah. terminal, but looking for the Lululemon, we walked all through the city and we got to really enjoy it and see how beautiful it was. I must say the donuts from Tim Hortons, they were pretty good. The coffee was a little too sweet for me, but this one loved I like it. Sweet coffee. <laughs> <laughs> I like my coffee a little more on the coffee side, not so much sugar. <laughs> but it was really good. We have no complaints. So one thing we didn't mention was that when you get off of the boat mm -hmm. in Canada, you have to go through customs. So when you go through customs, it takes some time. So once you are in Canada and you come back onto the mm -hmm. boat, you have to go back through customs again. Yeah. So we had to stand in the line. I think we were in line for like an hour trying to get back onto yeah. the boat. Trying to get back into the boat. So do keep that in mind. Um, if you get off the boat, you're going to have to go through customs. Yeah, twice. And it can take a while. So yeah. make sure that you allot, truthfully, I would say at least two hours yeah. just in case because you never know to get back on the ship. You don't know how many people are going to be trying to get back right. on at that time. At the right. time we were getting on, there was a lot of people trying to get back on. Yeah. Definitely try to get off the ship as early as possible. That way you can take those two yeah. hours that it's going to take to get back mm -hmm. on the ship. That way you don't feel like you're missing out or like you have to rush through the city. Because at no point did we feel like we were rushing no, through the city. No, we took our time. We took our time and then finally we saw it was like two hours before the ship was supposed to leave. So we decided at that point to head back just in case there was a line and good thing we did. And then uh, super fun when we were leaving there's a bridge that... Oh, yeah. <laughs> you remember this? I thought for sure we were going to hit that thing. Yeah, there, there's a bridge that we had to go, the ship had to go under. 
they said that there was about four inches of clearance between that point on the boat mm. and the actual bridge. So you see in the video that That's, we're going to show you. It's crazy. You see everybody on the upper deck. Everyone's looking, looking up, at, oh, we're gonna thinking hit we're going to hit the bridge. <laughs> we're going to hit the bridge. And someone even yells like, whoa. <laughs> really thought we were gonna hit it but I gotta give it to these you know ship engineers or whoever's in charge of making sure that the boat mm -hmm. or I'm sorry the ship is gonna go through it was like hairline <laughs> but we made it through safely thank goodness. So you figure with the global warming and the rising sea levels that that probably won't clear eventually. Yeah and so that was it that was the day at Vancouver it was a wonderful day we fell in love with Canada and our next stop was Icy Strait Point, also known as Huna, Huna. Alaska. <laughs> and since this video is already getting a little long, we will cover Huna in our next week's episode. Stay tuned. We look forward to seeing you guys. We hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and maybe share it with a friend who might enjoy watching it and, I don't know, subscribing to the channel and helping us reach our goal of 1,000 subscribers. See you next time. Yeah. <laughs> Our goal of 1,000 subscribers. Yeah. <laughs>2017. It was a 14 day cruise and we got to visit some beautiful parts of Alaska. But for sure it was 2018. God <laughs> damn it. <laughs> please, please, please help us reach our channel of 1,000 subscribers. Purple. I'll cut that part out and I'll just say please. <laughs> <laughs>